<sighs> Have you guys thought about a jingle? No. <laughs> I mean, when Car you... Stereo when, when you... <laughs> <Bye -bye. laughs> With um, when you watch it on YouTube, I had a, I had a um, intro soundtrack and, and whatnot, but you know, a jingle would be cool, I guess. Sure. Go get on that. Yeah, I will. Actually, when we, on the, um, the podcast that we do, hey, it's Daisy. Um, it's, uh, um, yeah. What's on, Nick? <sighs> All right, sorry, everyone. Daisy. Sorry we're a couple minutes late. As you can see, we're in the install bay. That was Dean's uh, fault. We, so. it, it's totally my fault. We started uh, in the showroom. We're apparently never going to have the show over there anymore. Yeah. Which is fine. Hey, from Modesto. I was born in Modesto. Really? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wow. a Central Valley, California guy. So what's up from Modesto? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. I, dude, I, I loved California. We yeah. had a blast. I, yeah. I mean, if I had to live anywhere else, I would probably want to live there. What's up, Chris? Just because it's as crazy as it is here. All right, trying to get caught too much up in that. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it, 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 it's, if you're slow, it's just going to whiz on by. Hey, from Norway. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We have a special show for you. We have Chris Bennett here from Audio Control. Yep. Hey, everybody. Talk to him in a minute. Uh, off to the side is uh, Bill Freeman hiding over here somewhere off to camera. You guys remember Bill? Pop in and say hi. He's the handler. Yep. Um, make sure you have your volume turned all the way down. Yes. Um, so the reason why we had him in here today, obviously it's audio control. You guys are really interested in audio control. He happened to be here in Florida, which was awesome, yep. doing some event. So we got him here. Naturally, when we do these shows, we like to t dive into all aspects of who you are, what you do, and the fun stuff like that. Because audio control is one thing, but obviously that's not <coughs> the big story. The big story is who is Chris Bennett? So we like to start off by first letting yeah. you right. tell everyone who you are for audio control okay. and what you do. All right, so my name's Chris Bennett. I am the director of mobile audio for audio control. I've been with them just over uh, three years. Okay. Um, I'm a 25 year car audio guy. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I enjoy uh, long walks on the beach. <laughs> I kind of knew you were going to uh, say that. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of weird, you know. It's, no, like, it's yeah, awesome. No. Um, it's awesome. Let's see, you know. Well, uh, okay. Let, let's, let's, all right. So 25 years yep. in the industry. So yes, that sir. means there's a history there. Yes. So, oh yeah. The history, okay. So one of the aspects of the show is to show everyone that like, look, you know, you, you, there's more to car audio than me, the installer, Paul, the sales guy, Fernando, the installer. There's... Uh, Chris Bennett, there's Bill who's yep. a sales rep, they're, they're the, the trainer. Um, there's a lot of jobs, so you don't just have to want to be an installer, although as fun as that is, you guys are like, yep. I know, we're late, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, we were having technical difficulty. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, so, so yeah. I know, we said 6.30, we're a little bit late. So where did you get your start in this wonderful thing we call 12 volts? So. Uh, I was like, uh, you know, growing up, I always had a, an audio, you know, uh, kind of background. Okay. I showed Volkswagen Beetles back in the early days when I was still just getting out of high school. So I had two bugs that, uh, you know, I tried to do my own systems in and stuff okay. like that. Um, Six by nines in the rear deck. Uh, yeah, took the back seat out and put a couple of home audio tens in there, oh, and then nice. you know, Sparkomatic six by yeah. nines, and yeah. then uh, had a uh, crack. Craig uh, two shaft, and then like a realistic uh, five band booster. You know that was like okay. my setup in my first car, and it was awful. <laughs> um, and I didn't even realize how awful it was because I was like 17. You know, Dude, it's listen, like, my first audio yeah. box consisted of a, a, a box made out of a desk and pamper boxes. Oh, because we didn't have enough desk material to finish the box, so I, I can relate. Yeah. So, anyways, you you start building cars. You you yep. get this whatever it is that we get when we decide we want to do this, what happens next? So, um, you know, I did that for, uh, for a little bit with Volkswagens. And then, uh, you know, I found myself, I relocated from the Bay Area in California um, to the Central Coast to a really small town out there. And jobs weren't easy to come by. And so I actually became a tow truck driver. Okay. So uh, at like 23 years old, you okay. know, I, I start uh, driving a tow truck and the owner who owned the towing company also owned a car stereo shop. Oh. 
Awesome. And so I just Tone started. Car audio. Yep. And he actually had at a locksmith company as well, Lompoc, <laughs> California. There you so, go, man. Um, Did small you do water town. Heaters too. I mean, and uh, and so in between towing calls, I would yeah. just go into the showroom yeah. and start working and start you know building boxes and stuff like that. And then right. uh, he just saw the talent that I had and the passion I had for it, and just one day he said, "I want you to manage this store," you know, and. Uh, and you know, you go from being a tow truck driver and working nights and being on call, and he was gonna pay me a salary, and I'm like, sweet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it, it, that's always the allure. Yep. You know, it's like, hey, you know, I'll pay you to do something you really enjoy. Yep. Oh, God, quit, stop. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it was just, you know, it, it just that shop really flourished, um, and then I wanted to go out and do my own thing. You know, so okay. uh, a kind of natural progression. Um, I had built a demo vehicle that was, you know, a really nice demo vehicle. He actually bought that de demo vehicle from me for good money, more than it was probably worth. Really? To help me get the, you know, the money to open up my sh my store. So oh, wow, that was I nice. opened up um, Audio Habitat, and that was in Grover Beach, California. Okay. And uh, saw some really good success there for, for quite a few years. And, uh, so were you a store owner installer or a store owner sales guy? I was, I've always been more sales related. Okay. Um, you know, I was never afraid to pick up, uh, yeah, you know, any tools or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, but once I had the ability to t bring on staff and stuff like that, I quickly, you know, realized, <laughs> hey, these guys are way better at once, it than I am. Once you decided bleeding for yeah. the job. Yeah. yeah. You Thank know? you, and, Johnny. <laughs> And, and, and plus back then, it was like, you know, any kind of customization you did back then was all fiberglass. And I just, I was, if I never pick up a piece of sandpaper again, I am perfectly good with that. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. I just picked relate. the paper. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> What's that, Luis? Yep. That's rough. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. So, uh, yeah. Do so, I keep on going? Yeah. yeah well, okay. You so, want to know like the whole career? No, so. no, 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 no. All right. So we, we, we. All right. So naturally, it seems like the store, you know, the store either owner, operator, installer is the natural transition for a job. So it's like you, you start doing this. You, you either branch out on your own. You go work for somebody else, and somehow you end up working as a. a you get out of the store. You right. Know, you you right. had enough of the store. So what was your first out of out of store experience? So with the store, <laughs> out of store experience. <laughs> it just went there, you know. You know, my bad. I was outside okay. the store looking in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when I had the store, it was during the real estate boom in California. So okay. we had sold the place, and we could not find another place to buy. We came on vacation out to Florida, ah. and. Uh, it happens. And you know, a house would come on the market over there for five or six hundred thousand dollars, and you couldn't even get into that house for six hundred. You know, it was yeah. six or seven hundred. It was ridiculous. Wow. So, uh, so we came out to Florida on vacation, and then came back like another month later, and we bought a house. We we were just driving, and we said, you know what, we're gonna move out there. We're gonna buy a house since we can't buy a house back in California. It was just stupid, ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, totally. And so we bought a house, and I'm like, oh well. We were getting ready to open up a second location in San Luis Obispo, and I thought, you know what? I had been married nine years. I'm like, I think now's the best time to move on out of retail and do something different. So, so you sold the store. Sold the store, nice. which was perfect. It was 2004. The economy was good. So good. Yeah. yeah, everything was really great. So, uh, all right, you know, was able to sell Audio Habitat, and then uh, it was about a year for our house to get built out here, and. Um, I hadn't really had a good luck finding a job out here, so uh, our yeah, house, oh, you know, yeah. and it was it was really scary. And uh, that so, was the heat. Yeah. That so heat. so one day, so one day, <laughs> you, you guys have yeah. the penny saver here, right? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. So one day, I open up the penny saver and I see a job posting at Metro Electronics, and I, I I just yelled over at my wife. I'm like, honey. I'm getting this job <laughs> at, at Metra. Metra. Like oh, they gosh. didn't even see my resume, didn't right. know who I was oh, yeah, 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 or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. And uh, so I sent them my resume and got a call like the next day. So you worked right. for Metra? Uh, yeah, yeah. Eight eight years. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what wow. products are you responsible for making suck? I mean, uh, <laughs> my bad. I'm just kidding. Yeah. A good company. You know, it was uh, it was 
they make some great products. They do, yep. and I, I yeah. kid, I just, yep. I poke fun because it's like, it, it, if Eight. they make 4,500 SKUs or whatever it if is, the, there's got to be a few that are okay. There's 8,500 yeah. SKUs. <laughs> you know, it's, there's, yeah, it's, so. exactly. No, they, I mean. It's not them, it's just the. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not you, it's it. me. So you worked at Metro for eight years. What did you yeah. do for Metro? Um, I was the Western Regional Sales Manager. So I oversaw, when I first started there, I got hired and after a couple weeks of working there, they asked if I would go into, into management. And um, so I agreed. Uh, we oversaw at the time from the Dakotas through Texas West. Wow. So uh, I think when I first started there, we had like six on our team. Jeez. Um, yeah. And uh, it was, we grew the business. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, it was a great time to be, uh, you know, even though the economy was, was, yeah, was, was, was really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Right. Very, very bad at the uh, time. Yeah. Our sales <laughs> team. I was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but at the same time, uh, Metro was uh, smart enough to come out with all the climate control kits when they did, you know, yeah. they kind of, so like the G35 kit, well, those when they first came out, you know, were, you know, 269 bucks retail mm -hmm. or something, yes. you know, and, and up until then, you know, sure, you might have had a $69 escort kit back yeah. then, so yeah. all of a sudden that price, you know, with started happening. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so. the, the, yeah, the, the the expensive kits that were just pieces of plastic didn't yeah. actually do anything, and then we come out with something that has a, a circuit board and buttons, and wow, you know, it's like now when you tell somebody it's a two hundred fifty dollar kit, they go, oh. Okay, but here's cool. here's yeah. you guys, honestly, this okay. is this is what's really cool about the career path and stuff like that. I, yes, I left I left uh, Metra, and then I found audio control. All right. So, so you go from Metra to audio control. Uh, yeah, I did some stuff in yeah, between, yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah. but, okay. um, but I'm not going to talk about that. Cause no, 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 hey, fine, look, fine, man, yeah. we all, yeah. you know, I worked for PMA for Thank yeah, you, John. like yeah. a couple of months that yeah. sucked. But anyways, <laughs> so we'll go to that. The cool thing about life. audio control is I've been there just over three years, you guys. And seriously, 25 years. I honestly believe that I knew enough about audio, but then going there has taught me how little I knew about audio, you know? Well, there's a big history there of yeah. audio, so I mean... They, to have the yeah. engineers there, and yeah. they can sit there and show me something that knowledge. I don't understand, yeah. and Well, because you great. went from a Metra yeah. to, hey, we build stuff. Right. You know, and we build good really stuff. good stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you, know? you, thank you. Um, all right, so that that's that's a heck of a you know, and that uh, honestly, like even when Bill was on, I, I just love hearing the transition from I was in high school and fooled with car audio yeah. to I am now working at Audio Control and I travel around the country and tell people how to use our products. Yeah, you know, and I help steer the company because you've been working there three years. Yep. Okay. And in three years, you can go back and you can look at the product line three years ago, mm -hmm. and you can look at the product line now. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of work. Wow. Coming. There's a, a lot, lot of yeah. stuff yeah. that has changed in three years in audio control. There's some of our engineering team guys, straight up, they're there until eleven o'clock at night. Well, you know, working and stuff, you know what I mean, and doing that stuff, just like you guys. You unfortunately, know? Yeah. unfortunately, yeah. someone yeah. decided that there was only 24 yeah. hours in a day. Right. What were they thinking? Right. 36, man, 36. <laughs> what? Come on, this is ridiculous. Made it so much more easy. Yeah, 36, well. five day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and that's, all right. So let's think of audio control pre Chris Bennett. All right, and and my experience was always limited with audio control because the the place I worked at it was like, oh God. But really, we're no, that's not that product. And it was right. like, and it wasn't actually until I came to Five Star who Paul had been selling audio control forever. Yeah. And he had it in Ohio, he has it here, yeah. and he hands me this LC6i and goes, We're putting this in. And I look at him and go, Right. What, what, give me, give me two of those boxes up there on the shelf. And, we'll, and he's like, No, 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 just, just do this. And I was like, so then, like Jeff Smith, who we, you, you guys oh, yeah. know Jeff yeah. Smith, he, he actually stopped by to say hi to Chris. We, I talked to him a little bit and talked to some other guys, and it was like, oh, oh okay, so yeah. this does that. 
Yeah. And then I started playing with the LC6i, which turned into the LC7i, which turned mm -hmm. into an LCQ1, which mm -hmm. turned into a, a DEQ DQ or DQ61. Yep. And and then it was like, oh, you know, in the epicenter that was always there. Right, right. For those of you guys who don't know what epicenter Amazing is, product. you live under a rock. But if you don't, go check our video out. <laughs> it's a really cool product. Anyways, so it was like the snowball effect. And, and for me, I felt like I got into audio control at the right time. I mean, I know everyone talks about about nostalgia from the 90s when you yep. had the EQLs, um, which I wasn't <laughs> not unfamiliar with, but it was like that was always that product that was like, yeah, really, yeah, um, you know, and, and that was that. I have an EQL in my car. Yep. I have one left. <laughs> I have one right. Here's a uh, yeah. serious. This is this is another great story. Okay. My first and run I in when I owned. Uh, um, my company, right? Yeah. Was this yep. this customer comes in, right? And he's like, "Oh yeah, I saw you opened up. I want you to go through, clean up some stuff in my system." Yep. Right? I'm like, "Okay, cool." His name was Floyd. All right, he had a Nova, <laughs> of course and it was. and it was it was four tens <laughs> in the back seat of a Nova in an uncarpeted box, right? And he's like, "Dude, you can touch whatever you want in this car." And then there's like an audio control EQT stuff oh, like that. He's like, but don't you dare touch that stuff. You can mess with the wiring, but don't touch a single knob on there. Oh yeah, because it's set up for competition. Oh, wow. of course. It is. <laughs> that was the first time I ever ran into anybody that did any audio. I like, I like, I like. Don't touch like, 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 one of those pots. I always like the wow. fingernail polish. Ooh. Yeah, to mark it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like okay. So, anyways, I, you know, and so for me. I thought, this is cool. You know, I, I, I immediately fell in love with the product. Yep. Because using the LC7i for me was like this, this uh, I'm an epiphany of like, oh my God. Because up until then, believe it or not, I was stacking and using uh, high level, low level adapters for summing devices. Wine. You know, wine them together. Yeah. And it was like, wait a minute, there's one box to rule them all to do this crap? Yep. But that was... But, and I was doing that because that's what I had available to me. And it was like, you know, my owner at the time was like, I don't want that stuff. I don't want mm -hmm. that stuff. And it was like, right. okay, so if he doesn't want it, then no, we can't have it. And moving here, it was like, oh my gosh, there's this box that, that magically does this. And then it was like, so for me, it was like growing up with the modern audio control. Right. You know, so for the past three years, I've in in back some obviously mm -hmm. five years back, yep. yep, or six years. Yeah, I don't know how long I've been here forever. Um, eight years. I think LC yeah. LC six I LC six I really kind of started. You know, the yeah. whole progression for audio control into the summing right. world and stuff like that for sure. And that's and that's probably six years. Yeah. So yeah. It, if so, for me, it's like I was excited, and and then it was like okay. You know, and, they, and, and to have a company that's developed that, that is as old as audio control, yeah. okay, and still developing products that mm -hmm. are relevant is amazing. And they deliver the product that they're talking about. Yeah. You know? Well, that's, so, that's yeah. So let's talk a little bit about products. Since okay. it's, that's where we're, we're, it seems like I'm headed. Right. Um, <laughs> so. Started out with LC6i, LC7i, LC8i, were these yep. cool summing devices. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with summing devices, that's if you have a tweeter, you have a mid-range, you need to get them together so you can have a front channel, you can do this with one box, you can high level to, it's, it's the high level to low level adapter. Many new late yeah. model cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Limited bandwidth outputs. Yeah, and, and the easiest way to describe those was like, okay, so you, you have this radio, this box is not gonna affect what we need to do. Right. So it's like the best way you can get from here to here is through this audio control road. And that was the sales pitch that I would always, and I sell tons, even though I'm not the sales guy, I would right. sell tons of products that way, and it was great. And then, you know, your favorite product, and I kid, is the LCQ1. <laughs> that face says it all. I love the LCQ1. It was actually one of the first high level to low level after EQs that I was like, this makes total sense to me. Yeah. And I can work magic with it. Yeah. Yeah. And because I was, I was always of the, you know, we, we sell Audison, so we had the bit mm -hmm. one and yep. it was like, you know, I'm all for spending five hours in a car setting <laughs> it up after I've just spent 24 hours installing the system right. yep. to spend the next five hours dialing in everything. 
And, and that's through, and there again, there's nothing wrong with that, but no, that's not the way not this all. store works. Paul is like, if I told him I needed five hours to tune a car, he'd lose his mind, you know. Right. And it's like, you know, I need two. Right. And he's just like, at two, he's still going, you know, as people see him walk by in the videos, right. you know, he's going, what are you all guys, you know, yeah. you know, and it's like, listen, we need to do this. Slow down, guys. It'll get done. Um, so, and, you know, I'd have, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Jethro Eason? I do not. Okay. He's a, he's a guy around here, and he was an old school audio control fan. Okay. So he has the old school EQ right. box processor, and he was like, "Man, I got this. I love this." And I'm like, "Okay, cool. Tell mm -hmm. me about it." <laughs> and he told me about. It. I was like, "Man, that'd be nice if audio control would, would bring something bring, like that something back." Something like that, yeah. And then I meet you, and you're like, "Let me tell you about this thing we're working yeah. on yeah. called a yeah. DM product." Yeah. And I was like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I want more knobs. I want more knobs. Yeah. So it was, it was that was interesting, you know. So I had I'd just come on board with audio control. Like just just so we all know, audio control is not yes. new to DSP for Pete's. No, sake. God no. You know what I mean? They no. had the DDC. You know, we had a original controller that yes. we plugged in and all that stuff many many years ago and it was you know it's just a different product it wasn't right for the time or whatever it was, before it was. It's time mm -hmm. it was before it's time really i mean dsp first off you guys dsp was is by all means nothing new no um i my first dsp was a pxa h600 that was an alpine piece that i did in 1998. Wow. mine know? was a clarion yeah Clarion. remember the in-dash clarion in -dash? dsp yep. yep yep that was mine and then yep. i had it for all of three days and, and then it and, got broken into? And, no, and then I <laughs> politely put it back in the box, uh, put it back in the stock room, and said, I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm being from California at that time, if you had anything in your car, chances are if it, it only lasted three days, it got stolen oh, yeah. back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so. It, it, so that, but that's a great point, because yep. through that whole time frame, Audio Control was coming out with these cool, innovative products. Oh, for and, sure. And they, were, yep. but, and they were keeping their core line of products. Like, you could still mm -hmm. get an EQL, if, you, if, you so, yes. if your heart so desires. Yep. You could still pick those up. Yep. Because they realized that, listen, these are what our company was founded on. These are what people know. Let's keep making them because there's people that want that stuff. And also revisiting, it's like, look, we came out with this really cool product yeah. back in the day. And a lot of manufacturers, when they come out with these cool products, Kenwood, um, <laughs> they, they, it's like, it's too early. Right. And then they just say, we're never going to come out with this again, Kenwood. Right. And boom, now you guys, it's, it, this is the time. This is the DSP time. This is the era of the DSP. I feel in 20 years we're going to look back on this just like we look back on the 90s and go, yeah. hey, remember 2018, ah, the beginning of the DSP craze. Yeah. Back then, we had that audio control piece, and we had that Phoenix right. Gold piece, and we had, it was. Yeah. we had that <laughs> Helix piece that was doing yeah. this, and, and boom, you guys are out now. You make a quality piece. Yep. So, all right. I, I want to talk more about it, but where? But before we do that, naturally, it's like let's forecast where to go from here. So we have a lot of places we can go. Um, one of the very cool things that we are doing more, like we did back in our roots, like the '80s mm -hmm. and early '90s and stuff like that, is we are we are ingrained in this like oh yeah you know what i mean like like somebody said chris is everywhere like mm -hmm. you know i'm on the road every other week <laughs> i'm visiting <laughs> dealers i'm asking you know yeah. i sat over here two hours ago and said what do we need from what do you need from us what do we need to do next you know to 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 keep up the relationships that i have with all the installers and integrators and mm. fabricators and everything else like that is where i come up with with what we need to do at the factory you right know? and we have a solid solid engineering team that i can sit down and have conversations with and go hey what if we do this the lc61200 amplifier you guys yes like that was me and rob riggs one of our engineers sitting on a rolled up carpet a two and a half two and a half years ago at ces and this is how the conversation started i want to make a six channel amplifier okay if I could make any six channel amplifier, what would I include on it? And we sat there for an hour and a half on a napkin and just drew out like all the stuff that we would want to have it do. Eight speaker level input, summing capabilities, 
assignable. It's, it's one of the only summing products on the market in the analog world where you can assign the sum. Yeah. And the power output and having that front level adjustment and stuff that nobody else had thought oh. or still hasn't thought about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no, trust me. Um, separate input and output level control. So when you look at that sucker, you're like... Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Like, real oh, estate-wise, no, there me. is a ton of stuff there, when you know? When the 4 channel yeah. came out, I remember, I remember getting it, and I'm just sitting there looking at it, and I'm going... <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know? You know what you can do with this thing? Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, and I was like, no, who... Oh my, and, and you know, and I'm excited, and when I get excited, every, you know, everyone every, everyone else kind of just runs, because like, oh god. Oh, here he goes. Excited, <laughs> you know. Crap. Yeah. You know, it was like, oh my god, this has an LC7i built, built into, into it. it. And it was like, oh my god, this has an LC8i built into mm -hmm. it. You know, and it's like, oh my god, this has like a DM608 built into it, and we can, <sighs> you know. Yep. So, you know. Our, so... Yes, uh, that all that all went off of you know yeah. where do we go from here? So mm -hmm. right. you know right now for a company um, in three years uh, we've kind of doubled our SKU mix. You know if you look yes. back, it, it, it's, okay, doubling your SKU mix is one thing. You know, and like, guys, it's really like four or five years because LC two I was huge. Yeah, the continued growth. We got new ownership at Audio Control, Alex. Yeah, um, you know, so the company has just evolved immensely. You know, even three years ago, starting there, there was, you know, we would have Monday morning meetings and we had eight people that were kind of in charge of departments that would meet and we'd have our talk. Today, we have like 17 people in that meeting that is just, you know. Yeah, it's growing. Yeah, it's growing it's immensely. Too too yeah. <laughs> but, so. but, okay, so like I was going to say, you know, it's one thing to double your SKU count, but mm -hmm. the, what the SKU count, you, the SKUs that are in that count is... You know, you guys have built home amplifiers for years. Yes. You guys have never built car audio amplifiers. We we actually did. We kind of did. We kind of. Yes, we did. We had okay. audio control system 90 amplifiers uh, in the 90s. Um, so that doesn't count. No. <laughs> no. Not, not like now. But you know what's crazy is like people still love them. You know, well, of course. So, somebody yeah. had said something about an ESP2 and 3. That's another yeah, one. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Dude. People hit us up on that one all the time. You yeah, know? they actually say I miss the ESP, uh, you know, mm -hmm. ESP two and three. Yeah. Yeah. You almost, you almost laugh and you're like, should we just pull that blueprint off and just just run a batch of them? You know, just you know. And, and I know what you're thinking. Yep. Yes, we should. And then you're going, oh god, where are we gonna get the parts for that thing for? You know. I in a lot of ways, like we've talked about it, like, hey, we should just do a, a quick run on it or something yeah. like that. But the reality is with all the work that we're doing you don't have time. to continue mm -hmm. coming out over the last, you know. Oh, to keep the pace. Yeah. You know, yeah. because it's one thing once you get everyone's attention, you have to retain their attention. So, like, you guys are shaking the trees. You're out. You're out. Um, <sighs> we're, we're a company this right. big. Yes. Doing things companies big, this yeah. big oh, no. can't do. Okay, yeah, so yeah. with 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 our product, so DM DM eight ten, you know, the first year I was there, like I talked to everybody I could figure out, talk to, understand about about the DM products and a DSP and what it needed to have and what it should have, because those are two totally different things, you guys. Yeah, yeah. What a DSP should have and what it needs to have, two totally different things. Oh, let's let's um, not even go there, because right? We have this box on the shelf right back here by that other guy, that DSR-1, and, and everyone on the internet is yeah. already planning what the DSR-2 should have. Yeah. And I'm going the yeah. other direction. I'm calling you going, can we make it, instead of a DM-608, can we make a DM-406? <laughs> which is essentially, or that's a 408. Interesting. Yeah. But I'm like, can we, can we go, can we, can we go yep. the other way and make a smaller like that? Because... Yeah, we, we, we've, we've had yeah. lots of conversations, so yeah. like an LCQ1, that's Noblis. Yes. Stuff like that. Yeah. So that stuff is, is all stuff, but we really like, you know, to have a, a two and a half year or three year product cycle with yeah. all these amazing products mm -hmm. that really take priorities. Um, but we are getting really close to finalizing what we set out to accomplish with the LC&D series amplifiers. Which is a Bluetooth dongle form? 
<laughs> just kidding. Uh-huh. I have one in my bag. <laughs> actually, oh my, actually, all right, oh god, actually, I gotta go um, lock the door now. Seriously, <laughs> even even uh, on Thursday, on Thursday. So yeah, I don't know. We can talk. We can talk about all the cool stuff. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, we'll get to all right. That. I, what I wanted to say before we get to the cool stuff, and we'll just preface it back. Re- let's really, talk about really, really ridiculously cool. cool. All right, well, let, let's tease that for a minute. We'll all get right. back to the cool stuff. And Anna- see, everyone's saying anniversary edition. Yeah. Now, Chris, uh, yeah. uh, Christian, there, he's a, he's like he's a big old school audio old school control book. and yep. Phoenix yep. Gold fan. Like he just yeah. Thank you, thank um, you, man. So, I saw pictures of the office the other day, or what I'm assuming was the office the uh-huh. other day, and I and you know and it was last week or Monday or two months. Anyways, last week we had Pack guys on. Yep. And and they were talking about how you know they're working on their products for Pack and. Yep. And they're like, you know, I know people sit there and they think of us in these big white halls with these engineers just lined up in this white room and, mm. and all this stuff. And it was funny because I saw the pictures you posted of the office and, and these just like depressing the cubicles. And, oh, yeah. and I'm sitting nice. there going, oh, that just totally destroyed the image I have of audio control in my head. Because I was Work. guilty of thinking of this... We're we're a we're a working factory, man. Oh yeah, yeah. there's no. But like question. you said, you know, small company, yeah. very we'll small company. Yeah. Um, good engineers, good engineers. You guys sit in dark rooms and work oh, yeah. late hours, oh, and yeah. they're kind of you know. Uh, well, they're engineers. So reclusive, by trade, they, and they they're you know vampires, and they just mm-hmm. they're masterminds. They shouldn't you know? be allowed just, to interact yeah. with regular yeah. human beings so. because we are not. Shout out to Chuck and Brandon yeah. and the guys. Back but we're not the on their we're not on their wavelength. They they don't think like us, and we don't think like them. I guess we don't think like them. You know, if you have a good quality engineer that could actually function in the public, <laughs> that is huge. Like, you know, somebody that can actually have conversations. Yeah, yeah. That's no. really huge. Well, it's like having an installer that doesn't, yeah. It's yeah. Kind, of, kind of the same. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, let's talk cool stuff. All right, let's yeah. do it. Let's talk cool stuff. So first cool stuff, what do you got for me? Um, okay, so let's just do updates. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Right. Okay. So... I want to update everybody because honestly, you guys, like over the last three years, we have had a very aggressive product development cycle. It usually takes companies three or four years to come out with a couple Mm -hmm. decent products. Mm -hmm. You guys, Uh, we've we've come out with like 13 products in three years that are just all absolutely amazing. So let's 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 kind of like I said, let's let's go and look at how we're going to conclude the LC and D series amplifiers. Okay? okay. So in the next two weeks, we're going to be shipping the LC1 1500 amplifier. That's right. Okay. I've seen teased pictures of. Yep. And so that's a 1500 watt mono block with a AccuBase, high level inputs up to 40 volts. You sent um, one to Steve Mead. Uh, no. No, I have not sent any of those did. out of the barn yet. No, not yet. I thought he had. No. Well, he might have been the 1200 then. The yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't sent any of those out of the barn yet. Okay. Um, but. Uh, or maybe we have. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we did. We did. I was going to say, I could I did. Um, <laughs> uh, somebody in Canada just got their hands on one. Um, okay. So uh, I know I've seen pictures of And he's of doing it, some so. beta testing for okay. me. Okay. Somebody um, in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. A, good, a really, really good Sorry. dude. Um, Sorry. Everybody's waiting no, for it. No, a vibe. Canadian. Sorry. So, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Very sorry. I sent them a processor. A processor? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so that's coming in the next two weeks, and, uh, you know, that's another one that's just killer. Um, you know, we did all the engineering work on it. We did 50,000 brochures, uh, you know, uh, and all that stuff. And yeah. then um, we're at, in Long Beach at Knowledge Fest out there. And then we have a pull-up banner with the LC-11500 on it. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the one of the first articles and I'm working, a working mm-hmm. unit, and I'm like, something's wrong there, something's wrong there. And on all of our, our literature and packaging and all that stuff, even the silk screen on top of the amplifier, it was uh, 120 amps of fusing, but the prototype is now 160, and I'm like, oh my gosh, they, so they built it, and all of a sudden it it's, has way more current draw than they thought, so okay. it's now fused at 160 amps of protection. So that's how I know those are gonna 
That's going to be a zero gauge input. Oh, yeah, definitely yeah. zero gauge. <laughs> Definitely so zero it's gauge. a real 1500 watt amp. So yeah, yeah I mean, um, so now we have uh, 10 units that have been built and uh, been going through testing on, and we're seeing like one of them was like 1829 at 0.01 THD. So not 0.1, 0 0.01. So in other words, it's it's going to be the the kind of 1500 watt amps that you guys like, where it's it's not going to be. They're, they're going to have, you're going to get more than what you pay for. So that's awesome. Here, here's, yeah. here's what you're going to get. You're going to get a super powerful, solid platform <laughs> that is just going to be just cool, good, 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 good. The, What's that Bluetooth? Yeah, where's the dongle? dongle. Bluetooth dongle. Bluetooth hey, dongle. Bill, in my bag, um, there's a little audio control black baggie. Let's see what I have in that little black baggie. Oops. Yeah, that guy. Black baggie. This is our, the black baggie. Yeah. Yeah. our audio control industrial. That's so that's old school right there. So you can carry around all your old school uh, it mics looks like the and bag stuff. That the, so, uh, microphone comes in. So yeah, so I was handed this uh, this cool little thing on Thursday right before I uh, took off and hopped on a plane. Okay. So this is a, a small little chipset there, and you know originally with the Bluetooth we wanted to do. We wanted to do a couple of uh, uh, pieces, SKUs, one for streaming and one for programming. Check out 608. And, uh, and the timing just wasn't <laughs> right, you know? It was okay. just like we couldn't, we couldn't make it work right. And then the Bluetooth uh, special interest group. So before when you would manufacture Bluetooth, uh, the chip manufacturers paid the royalties and stuff. That's no longer the case. So then they're like, oh yeah, you have to have this and that. So what we came up with is, uh, this is the ACBT24 now. So this is really cool. This is gonna plug into anything of ours that has an option port. Um, the option port right now is on the DM608, the DM810, and the upcoming D61200, which I know I'm gonna get beat up about here. In yeah, a they, already, they were yeah, beating yeah, up about right, yeah. right, right, right. Hey, and we're, 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 we're definitely gonna talk about that, but no, let's, we will. let's finish and, this, and, this and, off. Yeah, yeah. So what's this super point. cool about this is this is an Aptix HD Aptex. Aptex okay. HD streamer yep. on one side. So this chip here is dual Bluetooth. Okay. Okay. So you can stream 2448. So just, just for you guys, that Bluetooth is a name of a technology that is more than one thing. So everyone just assumes like it's Bluetooth. We have Bluetooth keyboard protocol, Bluetooth mouth right. protocol, Bluetooth music protocol, Bluetooth phone protocol, and then there's several different layers of each one of those. So it's just a name. It's not, there, there's more than, so to say it has two Bluetooth chips on it, there's, because they're both doing two different things. Two different roles. So um, one is for audio, which is gonna be the AptX. Yep. And then the next one. And then the other one is for programming. So when you plug into this, um, you will be able to use your Android device or your ooh, thank you. That answers your, the, the one of the questions that Apple we had so was, um, was Android it, if it was going to be Android. Everyone yeah. was mm -hmm. worried about that, and they were like, "Can you ask Chris if it'll do on yeah. Android?" So, so we have a new platform that's coming out, and I'm going to try to get it so yeah, um, so it doesn't do. But it's called it's our Unity platform, and that ties all of the platforms. So that's Android, Apple. Um, Mac and PC all okay. together. All right, so um, you will have a software update where you can go through and do all of that stuff. So um, you'll be able to go in and use your app wirelessly with okay. this guy. So, um, so if any of you guys have ever watched the show where we do anything, this is the same app that is running on the laptop. So if you want to get an idea of how this works before you get it on this, you can download it to your Mac or your PC. Right now? Yeah, right now, and you can start playing with it. Yep. In fact, for all you guys, we would highly recommend you start playing um, with it now. You start playing with it now. Get familiar, yeah. give me the pride. And just yeah. understand, you yeah. know, yeah. okay, oh, here's where a level controller is. Yeah. Why is there a mute on the input and output? Why, you know, because we need What can sanity. I change? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's all kinds of cool stuff that mm -hmm. you can do. And then if you have a Windows machine, if you're hovering over the trackpad a little too close, it's just automatically going to launch something. <laughs> and you're going to want to blow your gonna, brains out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so a quick question on that. All right. Not, not to change tracks real quick. This, this is a little plug-in. Plug and it will have a case. It yeah, will, oh, will, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is straight this up data. Is, this, is, this is what engineers hand you and say, here, go, go, go break, break it. it. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you have to make sure that it's not unbreakable, yeah. and, then, uh, and then you're good to go. <laughs> it's a nipple. Okay. Um, 
Will we be able to do updates for the processors over that if it's connected to Wi-Fi? Do we know that? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. That, that was another one too. Like when we we just did a car and we, you know, it's like, okay, let's do the update. And as soon as you plug in a the as soon as you launch the software, it automatically checks for updates. Yep. And it will automatically update the processor, which is awesome because nothing sucks worse than getting into the tune and then yep. something's not working right and you make that call and the first thing the tech support guy goes, hey man, did you do the latest update? Yeah. And you're going. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of the cool things is that we're still on, we're still on, uh, you know, we can still backwards compatible, so to speak, all the firmware and software to this date. Right. Which is huge when you're talking about a two year old product now. Yeah. Is and, it two and, years old? and how many updates we have truly done, you know, so um, we've done a lot of updates. We yeah. do a lot of updates. Well, you to have these to. Things. I mean, updates are every time we release a new product. Yes, you gotta, yeah. you gotta you gotta make sure that hey, okay, if I do this update, will my two year old DM still work with the same app? And yeah. you know, what happens if I go from a D forty eight hundred into a six oh eight, and they have different software firmware? So so far, so, I think we've had one of the most successful launches of. Of uh, in the, yeah, of an upgradable platform. DSP platform. Mm -hmm. And since you mentioned yep. upgradable, there has been there has been like the biggest. We'll talk about upgrades and adding features. So yep. right off the bat, you know, it's like even though you guys are audio and you guys have had these these things before, it's like like you said, it's it's what you need in a DSP and what you want in a DSP are right. two totally different things. And and there's the feature that everyone was like, why didn't you do this? Was dual EQs. So right. one of the big upgrades right yep. away was the ability to have a left mm -hmm. and a right yep. or a summed EQ, which yep. was great. Yep. Mm -hmm. And of course, the one thing I naturally said was, can I get it from front to rear? And they were like, it doesn't do that. And they were like, no. So when you have a front EQ curve and you're doing mm -hmm. the exact same... Like one, copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no yep. copy and paste. But there again, that's something that's like, hey, we can once we get yeah. our engineers yep. available, mm -hmm. We, that's something we can add absolutely. in because right. it's absolutely. a software thing. Yep. And of course, we had a couple guys on Saturday that wanted me to ask, "Hey, have you ever heard of six and eighteen dB?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So here, here's. <laughs> it's uh, okay. Let's, it's let's, okay. Yeah. Let's talk audio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so when I started going around and talking to all these guys about DSP and everything, you know. One of the things was was six eighteen, you know, everything, you know, Butterworth yep. and Linkwitz Riley, and, mm -hmm. and that's all good. You you guys like, it's fantastic if you have all that stuff. Correct, but it's a well, lot of buttons. It's a lot of buttons. It's a lot of features. It's a lot of functionality. So what we created was the product that is not gonna be the maybe the go-to product for guys who are serious about competition sound. They want the bit ones. That that are competing and doing stuff. Because when we were going out talking, there was a lot of installers in this country who would do an install and then they would not book in four hours of tune time. They would try and try and try to tune a car properly and they had all these features and functionalities mm -hmm. that they didn't understand. It was the first time they were working with it and those cars didn't ever get tuned properly. You know, and then right. they shipped it and then they were intimidated by, by DSP right because they didn't, they didn't understand it no I would have been this exact same right. way right. and so when, when oh, no trust me the first time we launched the software Fernando yeah. looked over my shoulder and just kind of you know he did one of these <laughs> you, know, right. it was yeah. like, you know five hours later I'm still hunched over the software trying to learn the ins and outs of it oh, and it's yeah. like you know, how's that coming for you, buddy? So, you know, so, so there's an audio gap. There's a huge audio gap. And you have all these people who want super loud, clean systems. Right. You've got all these people who want super quiet, detailed, accurate, uh, deep staging, you know, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what we created is that product that ties and merges the two of them together. Correct. You know what I'm well, saying? I would agree with and you. And if, if, if any of you installers, uh, you know, and all that other stuff, yeah. if, you, if, if um, if you pull your car into a garage, you close the garage door, you turn the engine off, and you listen to your car audio system, there, yeah, definitely, 
all that other stuff could come pl play. If you have a hundred or hundred fifty thousand dollar home system, yeah, definitely all that stuff can right. come into play. But the reality is, is that I can get in and tune a car, and I could deliver that car in fifteen minutes, and it would it would with one of yeah. our processes. Oh, yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I could deliver that car to 99% of every customer that walks into any car stereo shop in this country. Right. And they're going to be like, woohoo! Right. You know, like, right. listen to that. Well, and, and like we, we've covered now, it's, it's the features we want and the features we need. You know? Yeah. And, and you know, you, I, I, and, and I agree with you. You, you have to... Like like I had said, this is the the, the, the beginning of the, the DSP craze. I mean, we've, yep. we've had them for a while, but it seems like now every manufacturer is finally realizing that this is what it's has to happen. Right now, yeah. And everyone is kind of putting theirs out there, going, "What, what do you what right. do you think?" Mm -hmm. You know. And on one side, you know, like you asked me today about uh, what I thought of the the Kenwood 600 DSP yep. amplifier on the AR, and you know, in, in the first time. And the first time I launched the app, because you have to have the amplifier to launch the app. I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was like, okay, so there's this giant EQ, and then there's another EQ. And you're like, why does it have two EQs? So it's got a parametric EQ, and it's got a regular EQ, mm -hmm. and, it, and, and, it, and it'll do 6, 12, 18, 24, 48, 250, mm -hmm. and you're going, oh my That's god. And, and, oh. Then it, and then it has this switch. You switch to B. And when you go to B, it has pop, rock, jazz, Ooh, none, yeah. mm -hmm. classical, sub over vibe control. All in Vienna. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. So I don't, I can just, I don't, all right. Yeah. No. You know, and, and yes, you have to, I, the product's two years old. You guys yep. have made significant increases, improvements. Uh, you've given us what we've wanted. Yep. Uh, is, it, is it two years from now we'll have different products? Um, I don't feel like you have to make one box to rule them all. Right. You know. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you just like another uh, update. You know, last week. Um, uh, you do first. Tech. What? First tech. Do you do first tech? Yeah. First tech. So so, oh, uh, the alarm? so yeah. No. Okay. But it's okay. So anyways, uh, last week um, I had the pleasure of going down to First Tech. Uh, two of the engineers from ADS came down, okay. yeah. and we we, do we did the Maestro AR plug-in yeah. to yeah. the. Okay. And I was just looking at my pictures here to to show you. Um, I want to show you a screenshot of that. So anyways, all of the DM 810s that started shipping two years ago. You know they can get an update, and if somebody has a DM810 and an F150 with Sony or yes. anything like that, they could take you can just update that, grab the Maestro AR, plug into it, and the beauty of that now is that you have you know a completely fixed five volt clean 20 to 20k mm -hmm. signal feeding the DSP, and so when you have something yeah. that's good and clean and digital and perfect mm -hmm. like that, you know, which it, brings some of what, what that has in it. Yeah, from what you guys are doing. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. and yeah. the Kenwood and all that, and mm -hmm. and and that was something that that we, you know, that's the there again. We we talked about that, and we knew uh, that's another thing everyone was waiting on is the AR interface into your product. Which yep. 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 So yeah, we so knew it was coming. Yeah. So yeah, that's really cool too. That's another thing that's going to be happening in the next four weeks or so. Um, so you're going to be able to take that Maestro AR that's been on the market for a little while. It's been available for only a couple of brands. Um, we are believing that we're going to be the third brand, but we are going to be um, one of the ones that uh, plugs into our standalone processor. Right. So it's going to be a, a really cool um, thing. It takes all your inputs. Thank you, Josh. When you plug in. Okay. Um, <laughs> when you when you plug right. in, it scared um, the crap out of Haley on Monday's show. She was, it turned on. It turned yeah. on. She was like, "Oh Jesus!" Yeah, yeah. it was hilarious. Um, when you plug in. The DSP is going to have a window that's, that pops up and it's going to say, you are about to enter ADS Maestro mode. And when you do, it doesn't allow you to mess with any of the inputs. It just allows you to assign the inputs. Correct. So it knows oh, where all the cool. times are yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Right. Nice. Um, Which is one of the, okay, you brought up an interesting point. I'm yep. glad you said that. One of the reasons why it has taken so long for this product to come out is because of something as simple as a door chime, a backup sensor, and knowing where those have to go 
through your process. Yes. Right? That's yes. That's huge. To to go into an uh, uh you know a, a, an amplifier is a whole lot easier. Yes. To go into a DSP that's also doing all kinds of stuff, and you have to remember that our DSPs have you know uh, the RTAs all built in and everything else that's part of what absorbs the bandwidth of the DSP, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's stuff that we did in our DSP that make it really cool and that like we use analog summing mixers and level controllers and we use digital pots to control them and all that stuff to try to free up the actual DSPs themselves to do a lot of bandwidth stuff. Right. Technology, RTA, R, you know, having right. all those dancing pretty lights Take yeah. take a lot of bandwidth, you know. So yeah. pretty lights. All right. Well, okay, but there again, you know, it's like you said, you put a DSP in a car where it has the 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 backup sensors coming out of the rear left and the rear right, right, and we've gone ahead and we've added time delay into those. We don't mm -hmm. want time delay playing through a backup sensor. We want it to be backup sensor yes. when we put it in reverse. So now the DSP has to figure out that it has to shut off for that time when the backup sensor's on and beep. And all this stuff just took time. Yeah, and that's when a you lot. guys when you guys are like, we're next, we want to be on board, and then the engineers are going, slow it down, slow it down. This is gonna take a minute. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of meetings that we had just trying to figure it out. Figure it out. And you know, and like exactly what is it? it exactly how does it work? Exactly how is our DSP gonna have all this information that's funneled into it? I mean, you're yeah, oh, you, it's crazy. You know, if you open up a door and have a nap yeah. prompt come on at the same time and there's, there's, there is, you know, 10,000 uh, yeah, codes just that are just being car. funneled right yeah. into your DSP. Yeah. You know, so. And um, that's, and that's what, okay, and, and it's, yeah, and, and to me, that falls into what Fernando, Fernando and I were having this conversation for a future podcast this week, and it was like, that time and effort that you guys are willing to put into this product so that by the time it gets to us, works, and I don't have to sit here and go, Hey, I'm um, Chris. Uh, you know, like right. this. And, I, and that, that, I hate having yeah. that phone conversation. And well, that's if if I'm lucky to get that call. Yeah. And it, you know, the, yeah. the worst thing that you know is is that you don't make that call to me, but then you just go and blast me out here. Or well, I wouldn't. You know, <laughs> I mean, so that's that's another reason why I give everyone the better when we yeah. Yeah. when we talk about something like the D six twelve hundred. Sure, yeah. we could have we could have shipped that thing a while ago, and but, that would have right. sucked. But. The last thing that I want to do is to have anybody have issues, you know? Yes. The, the, the yeah. brief amount and small amount of issues that we had for a DSP launch right. was enough that kept me up at night. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, of course. And, and it, was, it was never like a, a consumer. It was always my friends, right. you know, that are like, okay, yeah. You know, and then they go to plug in and he's like, yeah, I can't connect. And you're like, well, it, you know, the drivers, you know, just... Yeah. Just getting drivers. Because, yeah. guys, we can control your audio. We can control your EQ. We can control our firmware and software. We have no idea what's going on in your computer. You know? <laughs> we have no idea. So right. when you're plugging in, oh, you know, yeah. Windows can do an update tomorrow. That could just kill every Ooh. DSP oh. on the market. Thank you, you know? Windows. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's just... It, yeah. Sorry. But that's the joy of it. All. I get going on stuff. No, right? no, 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 that's, that, fine. that's right. fine. And but but that helps to explain to everyone that's sitting here going, you guys yep. promised us this, and and to me, I don't care. I I to me, the most important is you promised me a working product. So right. ship me a working product. If it takes an extra six months for that product to work, mm -hmm. then because there again, like you said, it keeps you up at night. What would suck worse? Us selling a handful of amplifiers and then everyone just saying this is the biggest piece of crap in the world and it doesn't matter if in three months we fix it, everyone automatically assumes it's a piece of crap, we're right. not going to sell it. Mm -hmm. right. Or having a handful of people that are just upset because Wait. they couldn't yeah. buy that amplifier and they had to go buy something else. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. the, the, that's, it sucks because yeah, you're not getting paid but you're also not, you know, you're right. going to get paid because yeah. there'll be way more happier people that have a product that's functional. Oh yeah, and and that's the, important. The the pride that we have in our products, you know, like um, Bill heard heard me talking about it. These products are my children. They're my babies. You know what I mean? I have a ton of pride in them, and I'm not gonna go out there and just like you know, it's like if I if I was presenting my kids, I'm presenting my 
you know, my thought process and working with our engineers and working with Alex, the owner, I, and I everything else. I, We're I presenting this to you guys. I don't the know world what that means, there. putting yourself out for the people of the public to watch and look at you and judge what you do. I don't know what that means. <laughs> exactly. Explain that to me, will you? I have no idea. What, right. uh, yeah, oh, right. So okay. can we continue with the new product yes, that you guys you. come out? Okay, so Good LC11500, that's going to be in the next two weeks. Okay. The Ooh. ACBT24 programmer Bluetooth streamer will be in the next month. Okay. The ADS Maestro Bridge um, that will plug into any of our products will be probably four to six weeks. Okay. Um, and then, last but not least, the one, the only, the D61200 amplifier, which um, <laughs> which we actually, you know, uh, talked about for for a while now. Yeah. And um, <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, yeah. As far as what its capabilities are, so this is, you know, uh, it's it's a thousand dollars retail for a six-channel, 125 watts RMS. Somebody asked, our, our power ratings are true? Yes, yes, they are absolutely true. They're okay. Uh, you know, well, if you know, it's, it's 1500 watt drawn, 160 amps. Right. Um, yeah, it's not yeah. putting out a thousand watts. So, um, you know, that's something that we are all very proud of is the quality audio uh, uh, and the amount of raw power in the amplifiers for what stated power is. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's one thing. So all right, back to the six hundred. Okay. So so the D six twelve hundred, you guys. Mm -hmm. um, we we actually I listened to one last week with a Maestro AR plugged into it in a twenty eighteen uh, Ford Explorer with Sony. Okay. With factory speakers? Oh. I was like, what the? It sounded good. You should hear them when you put the focals in. It, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, it sounded ridiculously good. And, you know, we, yeah. we put that We're same test like bench in, into a, a, in a Dodge and it sounded yeah, terrible. Exactly. So just the difference in speakers between them was, was a big deal. So anyways, you guys, we, we are looking to have that guy shipping. Yeah. I have right now a thousand amplifiers built. Uh, uh, wow. sitting you know, that warehouse. are sitting there. Yeah. Um, all of our products, you guys, just so everybody out there knows, is still 100% final assembly here in the USA. So like the D amplifiers, we do all the DSPs domestically and then we put them in. If you ever open one up, they're clearly different designs at work mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so every one of those products gets listened to before it leaves even our lc2i so you know that that lc2i actually um is everybody ever drunk when they're putting the little pins on those <laughs> well ah, i'm gonna put them in this slot today <laughs> On an LC2? No, it's, it, uh, the it's LC, other ones. The LCQ yeah. one always gets yeah. me mad. We had that yeah. conversation once. Yeah. I'm going, why? And I had to go grab a base knob. We are very, very proud to be um, still one of the last U.S. manufacturers that still, you know, yeah. pretty much hand assembles. On our home audio side, same thing, you know. Basically, we have uh, home audio amplifiers and preamps, you know, that are 9000 bucks that are hand-built, you know, quality pieces and works of art. You know? Yeah, I know. I um, look at them and go, hmm. I would say, I would say, honestly, I would say, I believe, and I have no idea how true it is or not, but on our home audio side of it, any audio control products that are spec'd in, I would guess would be put into homes that have a hundred thousand dollar plus oh, audio yeah. systems. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Do you have one in your house? I do not. I do not. I, I bought a house a year ago, and I was hoping. I was hoping. I'm like, yes, I'm finally gonna get you know that eight, twelve, or sixteen channel amplifier that I've wanted my entire yeah. life, wow. yeah. so I could do you know zone amplification. Uh, no. So not I, yet. I just have morels in my house. We have yeah. our office. Wow. No, they're in my house, living room, baby. So Ooh, sexy. No audio control housewarming gift of a. Uh, 16 channel, you know, yeah, <laughs> $9,000. Well, I'm know. sure there's a pretty decent employee purchase program. Uh, you give us your car, we'll give you, know you an what? amplifier. Even U.S. hand built stuff is not like you would, you would imagine, like, no, it would be affordable, but no, it's, it's not, not at my pay grade. No, no, it's not. Yeah. And trust me, I know I look at it and I'm yeah. like, yeah, because there's certain home equipment I just lust after, yeah, um, like. For example, when I bought my home amplifiers, at the time, Onkyo was making what they call the M504. It was mm -hmm. an Onkyo amp that had big VU meters on it. Yep. And you can imagine who they look like, other than they're green instead of blue. 
So I was like, I'll take those. I'll take those because I can They're afford cool. those, yeah. and they look like that brand that I want that I can never afford. Um, so I want to answer this. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? Uh, about about uh, uh, what's in my car? Yeah, we yeah, were yeah, actually. Yeah, that, like, trust yeah, me, yeah. we. That's okay. a question. We get yeah. to that because right. we were not going to leave you. Like, you we're in car audio. For you car. Yeah, All right. Exactly. So hey. if you if you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. If I you saw that. <laughs> Okay, uh, what's in your car? All right, so in my car I have two LC4800 amplifiers, a DM810, and an Epicenter 600. I have AudioFrog GB speakers in it. I do have a center channel. So I have an 11 fa active uh, channels yeah. from the factory. I, I have my preset set. What kind so of car is it first It's off? a Kia Optima. Okay, okay. Kia yeah. Optima. Yep. So you got it with the, the premium sound yes. package? Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. And so I have, I have my DSP set up so that um, in my car, I can demo the the AudioFrog speakers um, with the center channel, yes, okay. up mix center channel and all that stuff, right? Okay. Um, and that's preset one, and then preset two is where I mute that, and I actually attenuate that that input into the DSP, but then I send it back in and sum it back in left and right. So if there's any okay. anything in it that uh, that isn't seen left to right. Right. You know, it's there, right. but it's attenuated, so you right. have really strong left and right, and then I tune that for a single seat car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So that's where all the time alignment, re queuing and stuff right. like that. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who have heard my car. Um, I love it. It gets down. And it's funny because... What do you have for a sub? Uh, I have a GB12. Uh, uh, yay. Yay, Andy! Thank you. Thanks. So uh, Andy and I have done uh, some stuff together, you know. And I was, I was just gonna say, and know, um, and it's did, it's did it's awesome, great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, like that. My whole setup. If you actually go to the DM810 um, brochure, uh, system number three is basically um, the layout of my car. Okay. Um, so you guys can so check that out. Real, real funny online. audio, audio frog. Yep. Um, so if, if you talk to anybody that knows me, there's one thing in the world that I absolutely hate more than anything in this planet. And what is that, Fernando? What are you talking about? What do I hate? What am I most afraid of? You hate of? a lot of stuff. What am, I, <laughs> what am I afraid of? What is the one thing that scares the hell out of me? Frogs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Are lizards I, or are lizards no, still? I, no, I love lizards. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. cannot. Yeah. Frogs freak me the... Yeah. I mean, if there's a frog in a car... I'm out. If there's a cockroach, a rat, a bat, I don't care. Right. Frogs, you're on your own. There's there was one video where Fernando was like, look, a frog. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Um, so I love the story that he tells about how they came up with the name of Audio Frog. I, I'm unfamiliar. He, he told it on a podcast that he did, and we listened to yeah. it one day. Yeah. And it was like, it, it's a, it's a uh, friendly name that women weren't uh, offended by. And it was... It, but it's like, and I love the product, and I love oh, yeah. the logo, and I love everything yep. about it, yeah. but it's like, yeah. it's a frog, and I was like, oh, and yeah. everything he was they saying, I was like, you. it's a frog, <laughs> yep. it's just a frog, God, um, which which is funny because, in, in, in <laughs> no, I, so, no, it's not, I, I hate frogs. Uh, but we were okay, so we were at Disney this this year, and they yep. have their annual art festival. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy there that paints these frogs, and they're the f the coolest frogs, friendly frogs. And he made this picture of this kid writing on a chalkboard that says, "I will not bring frogs to school. I will not bring frogs to school. I will not bring frogs to school." And there's this little jar with a frog sitting on the desk, looking out over the glass at him. And I saw the painting, and I go, oh, "Crap!" And and Haley was like. Dad, you should buy this. Uh, and I was like, yeah, so now I have this you painting. Oh, yeah, of course. I have this frog painting hanging on my wall now. Yeah, so You have to take a picture of it. It's I want to see it. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, no, it's like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So since you bought the painting, are you not afraid of frogs? Oh, no, now? I still have frogs. Like you guys have me. all become. Dude, those oh, yeah. beady yeah. eyes and that yeah. big mouth yeah. and those legs. And, oh, but, so, dude, like when I take pictures, it's like I go to the zoo to find the frog section, and I want the African... Yeah. crazy frogs so I can go take pictures of those just I use a 300 millimeter lens so that I'm on the other side of the room and they're over there and it's great and I'm like yeah cuz yeah. and when they go and I'm like let's leave so okay so all right sorry all right back to your car so I was, I was telling car. Bill on the way down here my car mostly only gets driven back and forth through the airport right exactly and it's like an hour and a half drive for me and, oh, well, that's a good drive. And so I was telling him, you know, I start off my day 
you know, it doesn't matter what time it is. I'll get in my car and put something on and I'll have it at like volume 22, 24, something like that. Okay. And I promise you every time I get to the airport, everything's just railed. Oh, I mean, yeah. I just, you know, once I get on the freeway and like one good song comes on, I'm just like all about it. Like, bah! I want to oh, yeah. crank on it. I, oh, don't, yeah. I don't play quiet at all. Oh, no, trust you me. Know? We tune a system, um, man. The yeah. last 20 minutes of the tune, that oh, yeah. when Paul's walking by and we're acting like we're still tuning it, mm -hmm. no, no, we're going through the playlist jamming out right. on oh, yeah. song. Yeah. That's, the, going, be, right. that's the best part. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, that's the best part. You, know, you were right. saying you, yeah. you were in a car an hour and a half just listening to it last yeah. night. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, uh, well, that's awesome. Well, no, that was that was actually the, the tune we were doing on a DM-608, the F1, the the F-150 we did where we put the LC... The LC 4.800, mm -hmm. which is just a beast, we put it on some two ohm focals, so it was oh, like yeah. stupid oh, amounts. Two hundred watts RMS. Oh my oh, god! Right. It just Boom. like Boom. serious two hundred watts Drove RMS. those K twos, yep. and you know, and it was like Dude, I that. Lo I love that setup, by the way. Yeah. And, and we, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so do I, apparently. Yeah, um, and Fernando's yeah. sitting there going, "Let me in the driver's seat. Let me in the driver's seat." And he's going, yeah, yeah. he goes, "Who do we know at Focal?" <laughs> no, folks, no. <laughs> dude with those amplifiers like the headroom and oh. and and you get all that headroom but the airiness and openness yeah. is stays there it's yeah. amazing when you got a system that plays that loud well, and the depth and just like the, everything the, is still articulate it's mm -hmm. like that's that's when you, it's awesome you when I the get, fiber was working yeah. into the dm608 and it was all working it, it, it was it was like damn it's goosebumps. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. total. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. which it's I like... describe in a video. <laughs> was like, oh, that, that, oh yeah, that, yeah. this uh, this video we just put up, part one. It was like that moment when you're in the car tuning it, and you play one of your favorite songs, and it sounds, and you get little hairs on your oh, yeah. your That's arm, and you're going, yeah. it's those moments. Oh, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. There it is. Yeah. Oh no. And that's. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of the times we, you know, we always play, when we're tuning a car, as you know, you play the same songs over and over yep. and over again. And then it's like, okay, we've got that out of the way. Now what? Now we get to actually play the music that we get to play. Yep. That, you know, and it's like, I was driving home last night, because last night we were tuning a car, we tuned Haley's car, which is this system and that. Mm -hmm. And I was laughing, because I'm driving home, jamming it, like you. By the time I got home, the volume was all the way up. And I'm just like, yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, my daughter has a system in her car that sounds better than the system in my car. <laughs> this sucks. And she's going to go, and I know what she's going to say. Dad, do you think I'll notice a difference when I sit in the car? And I'm like, you better notice you a better. difference when you get yeah. in the car. Yeah. 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 It's been did. an hour. And she did. You know? Because, yeah, when she came over yeah. here, we are talking, and she's like, oh, my God, sounds yeah. so yeah, Way yeah. so that yeah. was hilarious. And when you but, when you like just driving my car back and forth to the airport, like there's mornings where I go and I get back into my car and I like I'll be heading down to the airport at you know three o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I turn it on and my I make connection, it's like oh, yeah. you know I gotta <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 pants. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a, so that's people talk about like what about AC speakers? What okay. About Head Which, units. Okay, source units. Yeah. I like source units because I like, you know, I'm kind of a control freak, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and Audio Control has built all this awesome product based on, you know, Back not up. allowing you guys to be stuck with whatever the factory's throwing at you, you yes. know what I mean? So whether we re-EQ or process or do whatever, mm -hmm. that's what we've been known for. And so I think... Well, the the Maestro AR solution that we're we partnered up with is going to be really awesome, yeah. and that's a lot closer to having a true, you know, real signal that's uh, uncorrupted, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of I kind of like sources. I it's not something that I have. Um, I do want to um, have. I have another four amplifiers that I haven't shared with anybody yet. That I you know I want to have. Um, Finish the specs on and stuff like that, and get that was just a hell of a series. <laughs> hey, by the way, I got stuff I'm not gonna get tell you about. But I got four things. I have I have another idea that's just like, man, it would be so cool if I could do it. See, when I have those ideas, I usually have to call somebody and I go, hey, you know, listen, um, this would be cool, and I'm telling you because this would be cool, and you know, three to five years from now, this would be even better if it was cool. Yep. And they go, okay, thanks, man, and they'll hang up the phone, and then. 
three years later, I'll get the, hey, look what I thought of. And I'll be right. like, awesome. Because yeah. I just want to own it or use it. I don't care who makes it. Um, yeah. But no, I, yeah, that, that, keep, that keeps you up at night, I'm sure. It's like just the idea. Uh, product of, ideals? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I know the stuff I want that I'll never see. And I, I, believe, I believe that right now I probably have uh, four or five years worth of product in my mind. Mm. You know, at our current rate. So, so if you think about that, you know, that could equate to uh, another 25 products coming out of audio control easily. in the next, next three but let's, years. Let's talk like you said, head units. That's source not units. Source, source units. units. Source I'm units. Not, I didn't say head units. Okay. I believe there's a, there's a different thing for source units. So, okay. you know, when you're, lo when you're talking Explain. about the ACBT24, now you can have a source that's a direct plug-in, you know. Um, uh, I believe that that is a source. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're obviously, you have something that you're starting with that goes through if you have the high res streaming capabilities, you know, and what if there was a nice consumer app that you could use to, you know, control some basic DSP functionality, um, much like the Maestro, where if you go in, it's, that's really cool. Another cool feature about the Maestro and maybe like a consumer app on your iPhone okay. or iPad or whatever kind of screen it is. Um, maybe even an app uh, that's controllable by some of the aftermarket head unit companies, you know, where you have mm -hmm. touch screen and what if mm -hmm. they saw... Uh, like a CarPlay uh, app almost. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so that consumer app, then you could, Joe, open up your audio control app and now that becomes your source unit. Okay. Right? Because yep. because you're streaming 2448 directly in, you know, uh, you have all the controls over all that stuff and then we group EQ. So if you just go treble, it might take the top, you know, 12 bands and go group and group those back up where you're not messing with individual EQ, you're just locking them together and moving it up and down, mm, yeah. stuff like that. So, that's neat. Yep, so that's kind of where I'm thinking source unit and then, you know, a lot of iPad installs and stuff like that would, would become super easy and intuitive. What about know. steering wheel controls? Um, so you know what? There's lots of steering wheel controllers out there. But I think it's just a matter compatible of compatible. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I, I did have a conversation with uh, two companies um, going back like two and a half years ago, but it was just, you know, it's just something that we haven't been able to solidify. Right. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, from the visit to that, <laughs> that came by today yeah. to say hi is that's a company that, you know, I would love to work with, but it's just a matter of getting the right people in the right room at the right time to have a discussion so that it can be locked down and see if it's feasible. So Come I can't, on, people. I can't, I can't just go and make up a feasibility paper uh, under the assumption that another company wants to work with us. So we just need to be in the r same room at the same time and go, hey, we should do this and then have all parties go, yep, that makes a ton of sense. <laughs> well, like one guy told me the other day, he goes, you know, I need to just have you come and talk to these guys because it seems like mm. you're going to get through them more than I will. And I was like, <laughs> I'll be more than happy to. Just say when and where. I will, right. I will make this shit happen because yep. I will yeah. Steve Jobs up on their ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think you called me about something. You called me one time about something. There's, there's, it was like, <laughs> you should do this and... Um, I think I was on the road, so I didn't write it down. I probably should have written it down. It was down. probably the, the, yeah, the, the three to three, six, or uh, coming yeah, out yeah. with scale it back some. I don't know. I, I, you know, it's one of those things where when I'm working on something mm -hmm. and the idea occurs to me, I'll either write it down or I'll try to call whoever it is that, that I feel like, you know, the problem is, is like when we come up with ideas that we know will make our industry better or make our lives easier, it's, you automatically get discouraged because you know with the companies that we've dealt with over the years mm -hmm. that it's like immediately, I mean, for us, we're fortunate that we get to see the back end. What the heck just happened? Uh, I have no idea. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, had a little technical difficulty. It, what would a live show be without some technical difficulty? So anyways, what I was getting at, and then we'll wrap the show up, is that the one thing about wanting products to be built and how you get discouraged and I'm sure you experienced some of this, is just knowing the steps it takes to get a product from idea to oh, actual yeah. in my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and when we we know what we have to go through just in talking to these guys and they go and they set you down and they go, Listen, this is really cool, but you know what we actually have to do to build this? Oh yeah. And so that kinda yeah, you go, oh, this would be so cool. And then you're like, yeah, it's not even worth talking about. <laughs> well, you know, there's always, you know, uh, there is no perfect product because there is no perfect pricing. 
you know, um, I believe that, yeah, we could make perfect products, but, you know, if I have a single black box that is magical and takes me 10 years to do and yeah. it costs 10 million bucks, nobody's going to buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And so, right. You and know, there, that, that's it's form, function, feature, price. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's you have to be realistic about your expectations yep. as far I, as I have five things. That's when 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 we set out to create a product is power, price, performance, warranty, and what was the other one? I'm forgetting right now because I'm on live TV. <laughs> um, it's a, it's um, price, performance, price, performance, power. Oh, and features, and features. features. Okay. You know, yeah. because that's really where we're set apart is all the feature sets that we're adding okay. into it. And we're not charging ridiculous pricing for no. it. You know well, yeah, I mean? so, it's, it's, right. No, yeah, definitely not, it's, it's reasonable. Uh, what I like to tell people is like, our amplifiers audibly sound as good, if not better, and provide more power than any amplifier in its same price point of that quality, audio-wise. What you get in addition is just all those input features. Yeah. At very little to no additional well, no, cost the, the, than a good quality amplifier. The silly prices on the 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 one point eight hundred and the four point yeah. eight hundred and the quality and what you get out of them and they're the same size mm -hmm. and so sexy. You've done a couple installs oh, that yeah, are beautiful. Yeah, there's yeah. yeah. Beautiful well, trust installs. me when they're ah, yeah. you know my OCD kicks in and I am happy. All, All right. terminals on one side. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, I just yeah. Leave, I still leave the covers off though. I gotta be honest with you. That piece of aluminum is nothing for me. Let's not finish on that. Let's talk about something else. Because <laughs> there's always stuff like that. That too. You know. No. Like, no. Uh, the, 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 you know, anytime you mount those amplifiers upright or yeah, something, well, it's just yeah, like... Well, yeah, no, well, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, since we're going to talk about covers... Uh, hey, look at that, it's a 4.300. How'd, how'd you grab that? I just totally crazy, the one we don't have. Um, this cover makes sense. Yeah. This is a yeah. great cover because it's like, I can I can do you anything can with it. it. Yeah. I, I, this, yeah. this makes me happy because, like the other, last night when I was putting this amp underneath the seat, um, you know, it had to sit like this. Mm -hmm. And immediately I was like... Flip the cover. I'm going, I can't. I want it I, to be I, like I, that. I need yeah. it, I, yep. it needs to sit like this because the wires on the end have to go that way and these right. have to go that way and it would have been nice to, and no one is ever going to see it. I want to see people start flushing them in, you know, where they take the cover off the back and then just put them in this way and then the cover goes on the back. Yeah, because you can did do you that. Know that? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess I did because you told me at one point. But yeah. Like everything so else. So then you can just flush it in to panels, like boom. And then the cover goes right there, and you get like a custom look without the custom labor. Yeah. You can just make straight panels. I just want to take and you, it. You say that you guys are gonna come out with a bigger plate. Yeah, I have it in my bag. Okay. You, you were just so helping yourself you in the bag. I'm sorry. You I can grab it. the other amplifier too, and I'll show oh, you what, yeah, what it does. Yeah, and, and you know what? I love those amplifiers. Sounds yeah, really good. So this is the deal with these amplifiers. So okay. this is the four channel. Yep. This is the mono. If you want a five channel, you take the two of them like that, and then you take this cover plate. And it goes like that. And now, in a very small footprint, you have a five-channel amplifier, which that. is about the size of the DSP. It is the size. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh! Yeah. It is the exact same footprint as a DM six hundred eight. Imagine that. that. I wonder how I knew that. So you can <laughs> you, so you can stack <laughs> amplifiers and assign power for uh, your system design. So what I want to see people start doing is big systems with these because even though they're small, the power is super clean. It's super clean. Super clean. Like you, you yep. can attest to that. Yeah. So what I want to start seeing people channel. do is like <laughs> no, check this out. Check this out. This is, this system would be kicking ass. All right. A four three hundred. This is going to be doing your your three and tweet, okay. right? Active. Okay. And then a mono for each one of your mids. Are those full oh. range monos? Yes, they are full range monos. See, I didn't. Know I made sure that they were full range because I thought, you know, yeah. for motorcycles, yeah. you know, there's so many motorcycles that have full range eights or tens in bags. Do you need left and right? No. No, because they're yeah. firing into the wheel. Exactly. See, I right? didn't realize it was a full so, range mono. So this is a full range mono. So and that's what was conceived not far from here. So if you're doing a processor, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you can do that setup, or even just you know stack this on a DM six hundred eight where you have the four channel doing your mid and tweet, yep. and then you do the two channel doing your your mid your your mid woofer. Yeah. Right. So that's the big thing. Like our LC six twelve hundred. That's a such a bad amplifier, right? Yes. And it's killer, but. Do you necessarily need to have 125 to 200 watts going to a tweeter? 
No. No. But with this, you can get 150 watts RMS or 300 watts RMS to each mid, and then you can get your 50 watts to the tweeter and, you know, two inch and two and a half inch mid. So I, that's what these really were created for. It was like, hey, let's stagger power, so to speak, and have configurable, amp configurable designs. You know, so it's a modular approach of amplification for what you need specifically. Yeah. For and your system. It, it's funny because the 1.300, immediately I lost, you were talking and I'm just going, my mind automatic. Cause, because of the yeah. full range well, aspect. Yeah, yeah. because I, I've been I've range. been kicking myself yeah. trying mm -hmm. to design my system in my car and, and funny you should mention it. So three and a half. Here's, here's the center channel out of my car, yep. which is yep. three yeah. and a half. And then, these, Those have, been are the morels, These yeah. have been sitting here for two to three weeks now. I'm trying to, you know, and I was like, because these are just. Oh, look at that. I know, right? Those it's are pretty so sexy. So sexy. Yeah, so, modern they turn the woofers. Yeah, it comes yeah. up too. So, what I'm trying to do is I want to put two of these in as yeah. the center channel. Um, oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. why not? And um, I was like, all right, so if I take an AMC 2.300 and put it in there. And then, yeah, it's, the yeah, ACM. Yeah, okay. yep. I'm not, hey, listen, I'm not going to get the letters right. I don't know why you guys put letters on anything. But I'm sitting there. And we're so, not, yeah. yeah, I know. So I'm sitting there. I'm going, oh, so if I take the 2.300, I can put that, and then I can do left and right, and it's going to be 4 ohm. It's not going to give me that much power, and I won't be blah, 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 blah. And, then, yep. and then, then you tell me that, and immediately that's a – my mind went from – I whatever, have a center channel. My yeah. mind went from whatever the heck you were saying, immediately go – I have a center channel. I have an amp now for my center when, channel. When I, fir when I first was doing all the specs, in fact, I still have all the feasibility papers on it, but uh, I wanted to, uh, and I still want to do one of these, basically a half size of one of these. Yeah. No. That would just be a 75 watt, small, little, single mono channel yeah. amplifier. Oh, mm -hmm. totally. You know, but then, you know, obviously we as a company, we put a lot of money into this, so. Please, yeah. Please buy our ACM yeah. amplifiers. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, and they're well, really nice. And the other yeah. thing yeah. That, that we had talked about, you and I had talked about at one point when we were talking about Epicenter, because we, mm. we were talking months ago when we were talking oh, about oh, planning yeah. for the Epicenter uh, video we just shot was... Um, <laughs> Jeff said, Dean was like, uh, uh, Center Channel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, was, it would be cool if we could put an Epicenter in something like that size. That would be... Because yeah. you could take, that would be cool. Or half that. Make so it I just don't want to have a product that has an identity crisis because a lot, <laughs> an, a, okay, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, the epicenter customers are perfectly fine with picking up the epicenter, but a lot of them want to use like you know a two hundred and fifty dollar two thousand watt amplifier or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all of our products um, are very very engineered and high quality products and and with that comes with a high price point well, no, you know no, no, and, I'm and, not, and i'm not saying a high price point i just meant different form uh, function for the big panel that is now the epicenter. like a plug-in epicenter right? yeah. 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 yeah 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 i thought about that too that's yeah. one that had, i've stayed up at night thinking about oh like, trust me just I'm to have a little like yeah you know a little so you're not gonna sleep so, tonight Oh, I'm gonna sleep. I'm tired. I've been, <laughs> I on, the road. I've been on the road for. He's a gonna lot sleep of as good as we're gonna sleep because yeah, you know, totally. twelve thirty yeah. last night was fun. Twelve thirty last night, so. yes. All right. So um, before, before yeah, you go, go ahead. Uh, somebody say, say when the Bluetooth chip is coming. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, four weeks. Four weeks is what we're looking at right now. Okay. Um, End of and, summer. And yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it, it, that's the other thing is you know as you get closer to release you know the, the certain products uh, take priority so the LC1 1500 will be the next guy shipping and then uh, the sure. ACBT24 and then the Maestro and then the D6 1200 that's okay. what's that all those products can be juggled um, for shipping but n none of those should be more than eight weeks Okay. And then it'll Is bring us fair? to the end of the end of yeah. the year. Yeah. And that'll put us in. And then we'll put a little bit of a hold on products uh, releases until until we get closer to CES. Because I have a lot of little cool things for CES. That's January, you guys. <sighs> a lot of. Cool I know, and it's like already July. I know. I yeah. keep thinking about it. Cause, anyways. All right, guys, thank you so much for putting up with all the headaches we've had tonight. Yep. Thank you, Chris Bennett, for Chris. coming on thank the you show. Guys. Thank, thank you for audio there. control letting him come. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Audio Control. Uh, <laughs> you guys are all right. Yeah, you guys are okay by him. They gave, you know, they gave him free t-shirts, so I mean, you know, you gotta like This is a nice shirt. It is a nice shirt, trust me. I, I don't have an Audio Control shirt that fits anymore, so. Um, I, yeah, anyways, I'm just saying. You both wear the same size now. Yeah. <laughs> you both are mediums or what? Yeah. Large All right, video. speaking of shirts, if you guys need shirts, you know where to find them, teespring slash store dot slash five star dot com. You can go to DNF tool drawer, you can find the tools we use for the show. And also if you want to be a part of the Patreon, by all means, Patreon five star dot com. Check us out there. Thank you guys so much for putting up with us tonight. We hope you guys enjoyed this special episode <laughs> of Car Audio Talk with Dean and Fernando. I'm Dean, he's I'm Fernando. How's Chris? They gotta work on a jingle. Jingle time. <laughs> Pipe and jingle. Be safe. We'll see you guys all Saturday. Bye. Bye. See ya.